with the material and geometry definitions complete, let's move on to the mesh operations. Select the physical components of the geometry and assign an inside selection mesh operation. Choose length based and a refinement of say one millimeter. Next, let's add our windings. First, let's start with our first winding and set it to stranded with a current of one milliamp. Repeat the process to add the second winding, also setting that to stranded with a current of one milliamp and a phase difference of 90 degrees. With the two windings added, we can select our terminals with the cross sections we defined earlier. Assign excitation and add coil terminal. For both of our transformer windings, we'll have 1,000 turns. Now select each winding and add terminal. Repeat the process for the second one. Next, let's add eddy current losses in the aluminum box. First, click excitation and then choose set eddy effects. Notice that both the cylinder and the box objects are enabled. The cylinder objects refer to the copper that we created and the box objects refer to the aluminum that we created. All objects with a conductivity above a certain threshold will be automatically included. However, we have selected a stranded winding type for the copper that explicitly ignores eddy effects. So we will have no use of enabling eddy effect losses in the copper cylinders. Let's disable those. To enable calculation of a mutual inductance matrix, let's enable the parameter here. Click parameters, assign matrix, and enable both of the windings we've created. Next, let's add our analysis setup by choosing analysis and selecting add solution setup. Let's navigate to the solver tab so we can add our frequency. Let's choose 10 kilohertz. Next, we can add our parametric sweep. First, select optometrics and choose add parametric. We'll add our dist offset variable and start with one millimeter and end at five millimeters and step sides of half a millimeter. Add that and navigate to the Options tab. We can enable Save Fields and Mesh to save the field for every value of the parameter. With all these steps taken, we're ready to solve. Right click on the added parametric setup and choose Analyze. Once we have a solved model, we're ready to look at some results. Let's navigate to the Results tab and create a rectangular plot under eddy current report. We've solved for a parametric sweep with the variable dist offset previously, so let's select that as our primary sweep. To take a look at the self and mutual inductance values, let's navigate to the L category. Select both of the quantities and choose new report. Shown on the screen now is the resulting plot. The y-axis depicts the inductance value, and the x-axis depicts the dist offset parameter, which is a representation of the separation distance between the two coils. Shown on top is the self-inductance of the first winding. Below that in green is the mutual inductance. Now similarly, we can create a report using the winding category. Be sure to switch the primary sweep again and navigate to winding. For now, let's take a look at the induced voltages. This will also create a new report and we can take a look at the results. The result of the winding plot is shown on the screen. As before, in red, we have the back EMF for winding one, and in green, we have the back EMF of winding two. Next, let's take a look at the effect of the aluminum on our solid losses. Let's create another field report and navigate to the loss quantity. But before, let's change the sweep to dist offset and select solid loss. Create a new report and take a look at the results. The depicted plot shows the integrated loss in the aluminum, but later we'll take a look 
at the spatial distribution of the losses with the power density plot. Next, let's navigate back to the geometry. Let's start by selecting planes and choosing YZ. Next, right click, choose fields and select MAGB. To get a better look at this, let's select the entire transformer geometry and choose fit selected. Next, select anywhere else to deselect and choose the front orientation. This will get us a better look at the flux density concentration in the ferrite plate. Next, we can animate the plot by right clicking MAGB1 and choosing Animate. Let's choose Phase and select OK. This will create successive images showing the magnitude of the magnetic field as we vary over the phase of our input signal. From here, we can either choose to export or keep the play within the graphics window. Let's close out of this for now. Next, let's move on to a different plot. So let's disable the visibility on our current plot and change the orientation. Let's take a look at the faces on the aluminum plate and let's plot the ohmic losses. Select one of the plates, navigate to other ohmic loss, and choose plot on surface only. Select OK and take a look at the results. To get a better look, we can further change the orientation like so. This should give us a pretty clear indication that the majority of the heating is centered around a ring immediately outside the ferrite backing. This concludes the demonstration for wireless power transfer. Thanks for watching.